Gordina McMahon is one of the UK's top 10 life coaches and has helped thousands of people with a variety of problems. Luckily for Teachers TV, Gordina is on hand to respond to some of the requests for help from stressed support staff, tired teachers and harried heads. Well, I had a plea from Robin this week, and he's a secondary school history teacher, and his life is full of change. In fact, he's changing as fast as a set of traffic lights, so have a look and see what I mean. My name's uh, Rob Bishop, um, Head of History at Ashton Technology College. I've uh, been teaching for four years, uh, worked in industry before that. In the past 18 months, I've got married, we bought a house, and we've had a daughter. We're also being a head of department at school, there's added pressures, I had an Ofsted review. Obviously I have to juggle between meetings after school, revision sessions, clubs at school with getting home to look after my uh, new daughter who's five months old and seeing my wife and, and finding myself some time. The problems I face at school are finding time to do specific tasks, uh, maybe taking on too much and trying to divide my time between all the different, you know, the meetings, the clubs, the students. Leslie's a teacher as well at the same school so she understands a lot of the pressures of uh, what being a teacher is like. Sometimes it's difficult to switch off, especially when we were both working, but now she's on maternity leave. Obviously, she may, maybe we don't talk about school as much as we used to. The situation at the moment is probably that I feel guilty and um, when he comes back and more likely to be probably myself, but irritable because I'm tired as well and we're both tired for different reasons. I think since having Megan, I've got a little bit more irritable and sort of my patience level seems really low. Rob's really good at calming me down, and, but I don't know how long he's going to have that energy for and to keep sort of being there and supporting me. Um, and also I need to sort of support him a bit more as well. Um, so from that point of view, my concerns, if it carried on, um, would that completely change how, think, how our relationship? Well, Robin certainly needs some help, so I better scoot off and see what I can do and see if we can slow those changes down. Hi, Rob. I'm Hi. Dina. Hi, nice Vivian. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on through. Thank you. So Robin, tell me, what are your challenges? Yeah, I'm um, certainly, I think, balancing sort of life with, with work, which is school, obviously, and, mm -hmm. and with a new family, a new house, a uh, relatively new marriage. I think balancing the time between all of those mm -hmm. is certainly uh, quite a challenge. Absolutely, because, I mean, the way that I'm looking at it is, you know, there, there was you and your wife, and then along comes the little one, and so you now have got a completely different dynamic really yeah. going on, and I guess that's an extra pressure to yeah. incorporate. But mm -hmm. now, obviously, Leslie's not at school mm -hmm. while she's on maternity leave, the, the pressures of seeing Megan and, and helping out around, around the house and stuff, I think, have, uh, have certainly put, uh, added to this year. Sometimes I'm good at it, but sometimes things do get mm -hmm. on top, and I think it's maybe finding the 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 tasks or the all the work I've got got to do rather than trying to do it all at the same time. And we've got school, we've got your wife and your baby. How much time do you get for you? Do you have any activities that you do for you um, on your own? I go to the gym on Sundays. I like like the time to go to the gym during the week with the sort of pressures of you know, getting home from school. I've either got to go straight there mm -hmm. or it do, I don't go. You know, if Megan's not settled or I haven't seen Leslie for, mm. you know, she's not feeling great or... I think maybe just, just a bit of time for myself would... Not much, mm -hmm. but would be nice. Well, Rob, maybe this is a good time to get Leslie in. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, Leslie! Hello, Leslie. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Leslie. Thank you very much for coming and joining us. That's now, okay. I've had a chat here with your lovely husband. And I just thought it'd be really nice to hear what you feel about the situation? Um, well, obviously it's a bit, big change straight away, sort of getting used to having a new baby around. Um, um, as far as Rob's concerned, I mean, I think mean, he does a great job. I think, from my point of view, obviously I've been quite sort of run down after having Megan, and it's sort of I really look forward to Rob coming home because I'm just not always feeling 100%, and it's just trying to get into the swing of getting back to health, really, and mm -hmm. getting on with things. 
So in a way, what you're describing there, at one level, is what I would call general settling in as parents, yeah. because yeah. I think yeah. most parents identify with that, that there's, you know, sleep deprivation yeah. seems to set in, at least for the first year, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and then you kind of sort of get over that. But then also on top of that, there is actually the adjustment to trying to get a new pattern going. We've had this discussion, but ultimately it's trying to find that balance of, I need to... Yeah. find some time to myself yeah. um, and Rob needs to spend time with Megan on his own yeah. um, and then obviously family time but well it sounds like what you're talking about is what I often call the you the me and the us in a relationship yeah. so there's the you and me who are independent so you know to keep a, a relationship going you need to keep those independent parts independent like you need yeah. some activities that are yours and Rob needs some activities that are his and then you've got this thing called the us which is the relationship yeah. And so how do you tend that? And of course in that it's also a baby. If you've been a working woman and then suddenly you're at home all the time, all your anchors have gone. Yeah. I think it's, uh, with me it's like this guilt. It's mm-hmm. like having a sickie from work and you sort of, you feel you've got to do something constructive yeah. in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really hard, I think, from that point of view to get my head around that well, I'm doing a good job, I'm sort of spending yeah. time with my daughter and... Okay. You know, but obviously when she's napping, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm meant to spring clean the house or something. Whoa, <laughs> girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think both of you need some strategies, actually. What I'm thinking about for you, Leslie, is something like this. Sounds to me like there needs to be a big mind shift that actually it is a legitimate activity mm. for you to take time out to do whatever relaxes you, that you do not have to. I've never seen anyone die from a no, lack of kitchen, cleaning a kitchen floor. <laughs> I just want to tell you that, Leslie, okay? Your task before I come back is to find something. Mm. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that, because I think that's going to be so important to you, and I think it's going to actually have a positive effect, not a negative mm. effect, really seriously. So that's your challenge. So I shall be interested to know what it is. Now you, maybe you've got to get tougher with setting your priorities. Yeah. And one of those has to be you. Now you do go to the gym on a Sunday, you were saying, and you have your football on Friday nights, but you were saying you would like to carve out for yourself another exercise evening or something. And you probably know this because you like your sport, but I mean, exercise is a great stress buster. It eliminates stress hormones. And I think what we need to do is to say, whatever day you agree that this is going to be on, it needs to be earmarked in your diary, actually legitimate activity, you know, yeah. so that you will not go, oh, I'll just, oh, well, never mind. I think that's what it is. I think well, yeah. it's very easy to say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym, but... So legitimizing the activity. Yeah. The other half, I think, is making some other difficult decisions, perhaps like at the beginning of the day or even at the beginning of the week, about what are the core, key, crucial activities for this week. If you put it in the timetable, yeah. labelling it, mm. what will happen then is you have to consciously override it, which is different to, well, I kind of do that today, yeah. because then it's easy to override it because something will come up. Whereas if you see it and you're actually kind of like, oh, it's this time now and that's what I'm meant to be yeah. doing, you consciously have to go, I'm not going to do it. Okay, so to sum up, I think um, for you, Leslie, it's about carving out an hour a week for yourself and also to chill. Okay, get over the guilt. It's called motherhood. (laughs) You've only got 35 years of it now. Okay, for you, Rob, okay, it's about, number one, um, carving out the gym time for yourself, but number two, being extremely specific about this is what I will do. By making it more concrete, you've got more chance of achieving it. One more thing I think is really important is for you to continue the conversation from today because you've got some great ideas between you, okay? You really do. And I think if you can take those away, talk a bit more, but also make sure between you, you make them concrete. Yeah. Rob, it's been really good. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And you, Leslie, and you're doing really well. Thank you. So I'm going to look forward to see how you've managed to tweak all of that the next time that I'm here. Bye. Bye. Bye, Leslie. Bye. Well, what a lovely couple. But she knows something about this one. When you go through transitions in life, sometimes you just have to accept that nothing is going to be perfect. So let them tweak away, because I think they can refine it. But actually, this is just one of those transition periods. See you soon. 
one of the things that I talked about the Gladina was sorting out my timetable, which I've, I've done here. Um, what I've done is I've put, um, in my free non-contact periods, I've put specific tasks. So for instance, I've put scheme, developing the scheme, work, marking, uh, filing. And one of the other things I've done is try and stay here till sort of five o'clock and then uh, cut off unless I've got, and not do take work home unless I've got specific stuff to do like coursework marking. Uh, it's been quite a hard day. Uh, it's about quarter to foot, quarter to five in the uh, in the afternoon. I'm about to go home, so I'm looking forward to getting home uh, and seeing Megan and Leslie, and um, giving Megan a bath and feeding her and uh, putting her to bed before I go to the gym. After that, three months later, and it's time to find out how the you, the me, and the us is working for Robin, Leslie, and Megan. So Robin, it's been a little bit of time since I was down to meet with you and Leslie and we had our chat. So how have the strategies been working for you? Well, the, the fir one of the first things I did was make, uh, on my, my teaching timetable, I put in on my sort of non-contact periods, I put in uh, specific tasks I had to do. It's a slow process in, in making me do it, but I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. And then from, from the home point of view, uh, I, Tuesday nights I go to the gym at 6 six thirty. once Megan's in bed. Uh, I go Thursday night as well. Leslie goes Wednesday night. For, she does yoga, which is fine, really helpful. Uh, she's going also Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Put Megan in the crash. She, she's settled into that, and we we all go on Sundays, giving us a bit more time as a family, and mm. and also to do our own thing a little bit as well. So. Yeah, because I remember when we kind of got together, there was that thing about you two needing to really sit down and plan it, and that sounds like what you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, we, we did sit down, and just, we just talked about it and mm. said, you know, we, and we stick to it. Like, even on Thursdays, I teach all day, and I've been teaching A-level after school, so effectively seven lessons. But I still get home and I go to the gym, which I find really helpful. I'll fall asleep when I get home, but... <laughs> but you know, it's switching off from school and, and also getting a bit of time, so... Mm. Well, I think that's right, because we talked about you kind of all needing your you time, so to speak, and, and, and that. So what do you think's left for you? I mean, were there some ways in maybe the strategies weren't as helpful as you would have liked, or...? I think it's getting into the... really stick into that routine, because mm. you still get issues, and I still... we still have that juggling mm. process, but it has certainly improved. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, my room's a bit tidier. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've certainly done quite a bit of filing since uh, since I saw you, and that's helped. And I think you've learned a very valuable lesson, which is when you take that time for you, and you, whether it's at the gym or going to the garden or whatever, you switch your brain off, it also makes life a lot easier, and one works faster, actually, yeah. then, when you do sit yeah. down. No, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, keeping to it is, is, is really helped, mm. definitely. Great. Robin, it's been a real pleasure. That's been really good to see you again. You keep up the good work, because you never know I might come back and check I on you. I hope so. <laughs> Take care. See ya. Bye. Well, it was really good to catch up with Robin and to hear about him and Leslie. But you see, what that actually proves is take a bit of time out, do a bit of planning, and guess what? You get your sense of control back. See ya.